Vamos lá. Hello guys, uh, today I'm going to show you how to resurrect a dead lead acid battery. So uh, by dead I mean a battery that is not accepting charge, a battery that is giving a voltage output but it, it's not usable. Okay, if your battery is not giving any record at all, it means that it needs a different approach. Maybe it has broken cells or broken terminals or dead cells. Okay, for that approach you may actually need to cut the bat the the cells themselves like you need to maybe cut here open up and expose the cells deal with them individually maybe remolding of the cells but this video is going to focus on a battery that is cells which are working but they've just been sulfated okay sulfate a sulfated cell is a cell whereby the cell has been covered by sulfation and it can no longer it can no longer access the cells because they are covered up by this thick layer of sulfates now uh this sulfation occurs when during the use of the battery because when the battery is now discharging the the surface in the solution of the acid they cling onto the cells forming this sulfate layer this sulfate layer is responsible for batteries not accepting charge or batteries not giving charge at all like maybe you want to charge it, it doesn't accept charge you want to use it it doesn't give out charge this sulfate layer is the one which is responsible so after hooking up your multimeter like in this case uh if you hook up this out multimeter you're going to get a reading of like three point something let me show you okay uh so after hooking up this multimeter positive to positive negative to negative and uh, looking at the reading of the multimeter, you can see it's 3.855 volts. And uh, in this case, this battery you can actually engage with this process of resurrecting. Okay, so um, let me turn that off. Okay, so after this is done, you can actually move on to the next process. The next process involves making a solution of soda, which is like the one which you, the one which you use in cooking, bicarbonate of soda, and mixing it with just uh, hot water. As you can see, this video is tailor made for Zimbabweans because uh, if you go over the internet, you're going to discover that they talk about magnesium sulfate, and here in Zimbabwe, it's, it's, it's difficult to find. Uh, when I when I engaged in looking for it, I actually found it, but the the problem was that they they all, they would only sell it in 25 kgs, of which I only needed two kgs. And this this company is called uh, Aqua Chemicals, and uh, it's located somewhere in New Albany. Then uh, that is when I discovered that uh, following the the way these tutorials are being handled at YouTube for a Zimbabwean is going to be difficult because the Epsom salts, which is called the magnesium sulfate, is difficult to find. So in this video, I'm going to show you an alternative way of doing the same thing right here in Zimbabwe with our regular available materials. So uh, get hold of your bicarbonate soda, hot water. The reason of using hot water is that you, the dissolving process is faster. You can actually use room temperature water, but it's going to take a longer time to dissolve and must make sure that it is fully dissolved so 250 grams of bicarbonate of soda then your hot water in a five liter bottle and in this case i actually use this bottle here um this is a five liter container okay uh so um after that you empty these cells now when, when it comes to emptying these cells uh the acid the chemicals that are in the battery when you try to empty these chemicals are very harmful you must dispose them in a very safe way you must not put them in the local sewer neither must you dispose them somewhere where there are people around you must find an isolated place whereby you are sure that it cannot harm anyone then you dispose it there uh, right here in zimbabwe i don't think we have actual we have uh companies that can actually accept this chemical and they can process it so that it can not be harmful to mother nature so just find somewhere where it's isolated where it cannot harm anything and dispose it there so afterwards you now want to fill these cells using the solution which you have just made now if you look inside the the cell uh unfortunately for this video i'm going to be showing another battery the one that i recently showed you is working but i'm going to show the same process the, the one that i showed you earlier when i was working on it i wasn't sure this was going to work that's why i, could, I couldn't record the video okay so as you can see you need to fill the you need to fill up the cells as you can see this the cell right here the cells in in there you fill them up until they are covered with the solution then after after you filling after filling up this this solution in, into these cells you're going to see some bubbling this bubbling is going to resemble that the solution is working in the dissolution process and at the same time the cell is also functional if the cell is not bubbling 
it may be dead or the cell is not sulfated, which is highly unlikely. The only possibility is that the cell is dead. So afterwards, uh, the bubbling will stop. When the bubbling stops, you need to empty the cell. When you empty the cell, you're going to get this grayish like solution, uh, which is some black like granules. And this is the, desulf the desulfated like. The, dis the, the surface that has been desulfated. I don't know the actual chemical, f the actual compound that is formed when the sulfation is complete is done, but you get a blackish like, grayish like uh, solution. Then you empty the cells. After emptying the cells, you pour in again the solution. Now you must continue this until you get a clear solution after emptying the batteries. After you get a clear solution after emptying the batteries, it means that the desulfation process is what is complete. Now we need to move over to the next stage, which is. Uh, restoring the battery to stays by using the actual solution which is the acid now for this part uh, you actually need to get, get hold of uh, battery acid and battery water battery acid as you know is a uh, sulfuric acid I actually don't know the concentration and battery water is just distilled water so uh, locally here in Zimbabwe basically in many battery shops general stores or even hardware shops you can, you can just get battery water right from the shelf and uh, I went with this one, 750 milliliters. And for the battery acid as well, I went with this one. Okay. Uh, so for for the solution now, you actually need to make um, 60 percent battery water and 40 percent battery acid. As you can see, uh, I bought these two battery waters, two battery acids, and three battery waters for this process which is uh three units of battery water then uh two units of what two units of battery acid now for the mixing part there's some prerequisites that are there you first of all you you need to get some protective clothing in this case i had uh, a gas mask so, some goggles uh now uh these are not the best goggles which one must use but Apparently those are the ones that I ate and I could not uh, wait to buy another ones which are most stable for this but they are better than someone who is nothing. Then for the gloves as well I had a similar challenge. I have this one but this one are meant, meant for electrical purposes but they are better than someone who is using bare hands. I would, I would recommend latex gloves. They are very cheap. They are not as expensive but these ones are, are leather gloves. They are meant for electrical for handling electricity. Now, uh, after your protective gear is on, you need to follow some basic chemi chemistry principles. Uh, you add acid into water, not the other way around. Because if you add water into the acid, you're going to get a violent reaction there. And you may actually get hit from that process. So, first of all, you fill up the, the container with, with water. Like in this case, I use this 5 liter container because uh, 750, ml, 5, 750 milliliter bottles won't amount to 5 liters. They are about 4, four liters something. So... Uh, I first of all filled this container with us with the battery water then later onwards I filled it with the battery acid then I the naturally they just mix they you don't need to shake or anything they will mix naturally so afterwards uh, I filled each of the cells of those batteries that I showed you earlier and uh, fortunately enough those batteries they are transparent here so you can actually see the water level but in this case uh, here they, they have this uh, this, this inscription here that says uh, minimum and maximum so your battery your battery water level must lie within this range here. So you fill it, you fill all the cells from the first cell up to the last cell. Then after filling all the cells, uh, you then hook up your charger. Okay, so now when you're charging, the caps must not be closed tightly because there's going to be some pressure which is going to be released. So you must make sure that there's at least some, some leeway, at least the pressure can escape. You can only rely on this pressure vents that are already on the caps because the pressure may, may build up and the battery may explode so make sure that the caps are not fully closed now in this case uh if you go over if you go over some some people will talk about resulting these batteries they may they tell you about triple charging some talk about uh slow charging and uh in my case i i, I went with overcharging because uh that's what I, that's what i did i unfortunately the battery charger that I had uh, was giving me a very a very low voltage output. Yes, of course it is uh, it is the normal, which is the trickle charge. It is the rapid. It is uh, here you can change the voltage output you want. But unfortunately, it wasn't giving me the the right voltage reading, so I had to do without this one. So uh, 
in my application, uh, I, I, I got rid of this this secretary here, which I made. Uh, so in this secretary, we have our AC input here from this adapter. Then right here, we have some filtering. We have a we have a chalk here to to filter the interference, and we have another capacitor here, another chalk here to filter interference, another capacitor here. Then we have the transformer. Now these two chalks, their their responsibility is to filter differential differential noise and common mode noise. The, that is the purpose of this of these two inductors, right? Okay. Uh, so we have this transformer. Then we have this bridge rectifier. Uh, it's, functional then with the capacitor to smoothen out so this transformer will give you an output of 17 volts when you in the input is somewhere around 240 volts and um, as you know this battery will, uh, will charge up will charge it uh, around 14 volts to make sure that it charges up to 13 volts but in this case just because i wanted to overcharge it i went with this design so uh after rectification this vo this output voltage may get up to 23 volts if i'm not mistaken 23 volts that's where it, it reaches then uh, this capacitor here is a 400, 400 volt. Let me let me focus the camera there. there. Yes, it's a 400 volt, 330 microfarad. And I uh, actually changed this capacitor when I wanted to use which is a 35 volt, 4700 microfarad. This one, this was the first one that I was using and charged the batteries. And this one was I just used it for later purposes, like when I was charging this other battery, which I removed from my from a car because it was not uh, starting the car so i need to boost it I, I just need to boost it up so that you can start the car so uh for the for the transformer uh the windings are in such a way that you get you input 220 volts here you're supposed to get 15 volts here but if you input 240 i was getting 17 volts which is uh roughly which is roughly the same uh it's in correlation i think uh so um where to get these things now uh for this part here the, the the filtering parts right here from here up up until before the transformer like from there here here up to, up to here you can all you can find all of these things in dead computer power supplies like in this this is how they look these things uh a dead computer power supply this is where i got most of the stuff and even for this later part, the, the bridge rectifier, the capacitor, even that, this other capacitor, I also got them from this dead power, computer power supplies. However, for this one, this transformer, I actually got it from a dead laminator machine, if I'm not mistaken. I wasn't quite sure what the machine was, but that's where I got it. And I actually wanted it myself. It was giving an output of 20 something volts, but I reduced, I reduced it to 17 volts. Okay. So, um... I hooked it up to the battery and uh things when you start doing this process you're going to discover that it's not charging like you get like few milliamps of charge flowing to the battery which is which is like too low for charging of this battery you actually need about several of amps like two amps and going for going upwards so that is normal it's, it's first of all it's not going to accept charge but you leave it for about a day two days, three days, when you come back, maybe the third day, you're going to discover that it's now drawing maybe four amps of charge, of current, and it will indicate that the battery is now charging, and uh, there's, there's going to be some bubbling and uh, some gases being being produced. So you come back again to the protective gear, like your gas mask and your goggles, so that you overcome the irritation that may be, that may be caused by those gases that are produced. Now, before I forget, uh, when this transformer is fully op operational and you are now drawing 4 amps of current, it's going to get hot and uh, it can actually damage the table like here. Like here, as you can see, there is the transformer responsible for that bend there, right there. So that is the reason why I'm using this fence. They can actually cool down the transformer so that the heating process won't, won't continue. And that is actually the other reason why this, this wire here, the solder on this wire melted. It was because of that excessive heat that was there. Uh, when it comes to building this circuitry of the transformer, make sure that you, you know how electricity operates. Don't just do this for the first time. You must be well trained to handle these things. And uh, it also requires the skill of soldering. So if you're not good at soldering, uh, you, may, you must not try this. And um, I, I wouldn't advise anyone who, does, who doesn't have a background with electricity to try, to try this. So leave this to the professionals. Just get yourself a battery charger that can maybe give you 24 volts to for starters because this one is slow for this process. Or you can just use this one, but it will take longer for you to charge the batteries. So uh, 
this process will continue. Like I was saying earlier, yeah, with 23 volts and you don't charge a 12 volt battery, it was maybe three volts, like I showed you earlier. You want to that when you start charging this battery, the 23 volts there, like the overall system will be like we drop down to 18 volts. It's going to continue charging, continue charging, and the voltage is going to continue drop, continue drop until it reaches a stable stable value. When it reaches the stable value to show that the battery is fully charged. Now uh, the stable value it reaches depends upon the type of battery. Like in my case, it it stabilized at 14, but the batteries were fully charged at 13. So it depends upon your nature of battery, but generally these batteries they get to the maximum right about it right about uh 13 point something volts. In my case it was a 13.6 13.6 volts. So uh that is like the the whole process to resurrect a data data battery. Now uh for more information on maybe the cost of all these chemicals uh you can just contact me through the WhatsApp or down in the comment below the comment section below I can actually get you the prices and tell you uh where to get some of this stuff. But generally anything that is that I was showing you it's locally found if in a multimeter yes you may not find this one locally but you can get a local multimeter because you just want to read the voltage basically that's all uh, he like i showed you earlier this is made in zimbabwe uh this these chemicals uh they are also zimbabwe made as you can see uh we have the contacts right there those are zimbabwe numbers let me look at the battery water as well the battery water yes as you can see uh it's, it's manufactured in masasa Harare. so uh that's all guys, uh, for the fans, if maybe you may talk about the fans, the fans as well, I got them from my dead computer power supply. So uh, that's all guys, uh, that is how you you can resurrect your dead lead acid battery. And uh, in this project, I actually saved about 12 times the money that I was going to use if I had gone to the shop and, and bought a new battery. So uh, this is actually worth it and uh, I would advise people on doing this because it saves money like you're going to discover that the the, the most uh, demanding the most demanding task for these batteries is, is like starting cars and uh maybe on inverters but since i showed you earlier i, I managed to start a bus not just a small vehicle but a bus so uh, i think this is worth to give it a try because you actually save yourself some dollars yes uh this is not if you manage to resurrect this battery it's not it's not going to get like the same capacity as the new battery but as I was saying earlier, it's, it can still be used. You can actually save some dollars and you can actually use the money for something else because this, this, is, a, this is confirmed. I can actually do this for many batteries. Like, this is the next battery I'm going to be working on. So uh, if, if there's anyone who builds this or tries to follow this project, please tell me how it goes.